and I am so freaking excited. <laughs> Hello, I hope you're well. Welcome or welcome back to my channel and welcome to today's video, which is a readathon announcement. Her Storyathon is back for the second year in a row, and I am once again co hosting it with the lovely Charlotte from Over at Connie Reads. Is that how you pronounce it, Charlotte? I realize I probably never said it out loud. <laughs> Um, but it is a month-long readathon in March in honor of Women's History Month. So this goes from March 1st to March 31st. And we have a bingo board with nine prompts. We have a book as a group read. We're going to have live shows. Charlotte just set up an Instagram account. We have, like, we have all the things. So we're going to dive right into it. But before I go any further, if you're not subscribed to my channel, please hit that subscribe button so that you see all of my videos when they go live and also help me get to 1K subscribers. We are so close, so close. In any case, let's talk about her story-a-thon. So the whole premise of this readathon is really to celebrate Women's History Month um, one of those quotes that's always stuck with me is that women are often in the footnotes of history, anonymous is often a woman, and I love celebrating women. Women who are famous, women who are not famous. I just love really digging into those stories, and it's a large part of what I read, both fiction and nonfiction wise. I just love focusing on the stories of women. So this is a very exciting month for me, a very exciting readathon for me. So you really can participate in a number of ways. You can try to read as many of our nine prompts as you want and you can double up, that is totally fine. But all you really have to do is read one book and that book can be fiction or nonfiction but it just has to be about a woman who actually lived or a woman who is currently alive. So it has to be someone who's existed <laughs> or still exists, basically. Um, so if you're someone who loves historical fiction, this is a great opportunity to read some of those biographical novel type things that I love. Um, but that's it. All you have to do is read one book. So you could pick a random book on a woman, you could use our prompts, you could read the group read with us. It, it's all fair game. So on to our prompts with our lovely bingo board. We have prompt one, which is from another continent, and that's pretty self-explanatory. It's to read about a woman who lived or lives on another continent. So in my case, I couldn't read about a woman who lives in or lived in North America, but I could do Africa, Asia, Europe, Australia, South America. The world is my oyster, just not North America. <laughs> so, so that's a pretty self-explanatory one. This year, prompt two is to read about royalty or nobility. So this is definitely a prompt for Charlotte. She loves the royals. I mean, I do too. I do too. We both have our historical girl crush. She has Matilda, I have Catherine the Great. Um, but read about a queen, a princess, lady something or the other, duchess, um, countess, yeah, all of those noble titles, read about them. I mean, this is, considering all the like, hullabaloo, is it a hullabaloo? All of that around the British royal family, like this is the year to read about royals. So I'm actually pretty excited about that one. I think I already know the book that I'm gonna read for that actually, not gonna lie. But moving right along to prompt three is a group of women. So this can be kind of looked at in a few ways. It can be a book that covers like an actual group of women. The one that comes to mind is like The Radium Girls by Kate Moore, um, which it is a group of women who worked together um, painting clock faces with radium. Um, or it can be a book that is just collecting stories about a bunch of women. 
Like there might be a thematic connection, but they may or may not have known each other or interacted with each other in their lifetime. But focus on a group, you know? We, we, like, we like the camaraderie, even if it's just the thematic one. Um, but yeah, Radium Girls is the best example I can give. Um, I also have a book here, like The Unwomanly Face of War. That was another book with a group of women. It's oral histories um, that I read by Svetlana Alexeyevich. The women didn't all know each other, but they have a similar lived experience that links them. So hopefully that makes sense. Next, we have a prompt that we're keeping from year one which is letters, essays, diaries, or memoirs. So this is something that I really enjoyed. I actually have a couple letter collections and things, but this is basically primary source documentation. Um, but guess what? That exists in fiction too. I actually read um, a book on Josephine Bonaparte, which was her diary entries, and it was a trilogy. Um, I'll put the information on those books in the description box for you. Um, but this is what it says on the tin. Read a collection of letters, essays, diary entries, um, a memoir, again, on a historical woman. Then we have bad women. <laughs> And we love to put the the air quotes um, just because this these are just the rebel women, the women who kind of flouted the societal norms of the time and were maybe viewed by their contemporaries as being problematic. They could be bad asses though, or they could be really evil. Like you can take this any way you want. If you want to read about some famous serial killer, have at it. Um, if you just want to read about someone who decided like, hey, I don't give a flying fig what people think of me and so I'm gonna do this thing, you can do it. Your definition of bad can be very, very broad. Um, but we just like to celebrate the rule breakers, you know? It can be a little fun. Rules are occasionally meant to be broken. I say that it's as someone who has anxiety over not following the rules though, so don't maybe take that from me. But yeah, bad can be broad. Next we have underrepresented women, and this is really about reading those about those marginalized women and their experiences, broadening our own horizons and walking for a moment in someone else's shoes. And this could be reading about someone from a different race, a different sexuality, someone who is neurodivergent, someone from a different religion, someone with different physical abilities. Um, it can be a slew of things. They just have to be the people who are often overlooked by history. Then we have pre-enlightenment, which I feel like is definitely, again, a prompt that just screams Charlotte to me. <laughs> um, basically, this is about women who lived roughly pre-1700. So, um, so you have a lot of room there. You could read about medieval women, women from the Italian Renaissance. You could read about, like, ancient women. You have Sent, like you have centuries <laughs> to read about. Um, but this is definitely a little bit more out of my comfort zone. I tend to like my history from 19th century forward. So this is a little unique to me, but I, I do actually think I have a book in mind for it. Um, and I'm kind of excited. Next, we have women in the arts. So this is one of these things that I am really actually quite passionate about. I love museums. Like, I will spend all day at the Met. I will go to MoMA. Anytime I travel, like, there are at least a, <laughs> a half dozen museums that I am popping into. I just love it. 
But one of the things that's always really heartbreaking to me is how few women are represented in art. And actually a lot of the time, women's work have been credited to men. And it's only in recent years that some of those women have actually been given the credit and the praise that they deserve. And once again, this can be very, very broad. We can be talking about painters, sculptors, um, photographers. You could be thinking about like movie, like cinema, um, just anything that has to do with the arts. Someone who is very creative. Um, you could even stretch this a little bit and refer to like writers, poets. Like again, these are not meant to be difficult for you to accomplish, but we really want to celebrate those women who contributed to culture. Um, and yeah, that's, that's all I have to say about that. And lastly, we have women in the military, which is another area where I feel like women do not get credit. <laughs> um, and this, again, it, it's something that can be done broadly. They could be very well be women who are active combatants. They could be serving as nurses um, in wars. They could be partisans, guerrillas. Um, they could basically be doing anything within sort of this backdrop of wars and conflicts throughout history. So again, your, the world is literally your oyster here. I will say, I am not someone who loves military history, so you do not need to enjoy military history for this prompt. Um, I find military strategy tedious. <laughs> like I do. But I really love the human element and understanding the people in these conflicts and understanding the bravery, the sadness, the complicated emotions that run through people's minds during these, these very difficult moments in history. And so that's what I'm excited about reading here. So. Okay, so the other things for this readathon. One of the ways you can participate is the group read, which is Women vs. Hollywood by Helen O'Hara, which I am really excited about. I love the golden age of Hollywood, you know, the Vivian Lees, the Elizabeth Taylors, Lauren Bacall, the Hepburns, all those women. Um, and this is a book that looks into how there were these wonderful trailblazers, but Basically, Hollywood came to embody the sort of misogyny and the inequality that we're all familiar with. They were taken advantage of, their talent not necessarily valued as highly, the beauty standards just unfair, borderline, and in some cases very, very cruel. And this is a book that's exploring kind of this history of Hollywood and the women within the system who ended up fighting against it. So I'm really excited because this is my cup of tea. Um, but we will be reading this book together and then we will have a live show, which brings me to another facet of the readathon. We will have a few live shows during the month of March. Charlotte and I are still trying to figure out exactly when the dates are based on our schedules, but we will provide that information as it becomes available. And so one of them, which will likely take place in early April, is actually the group read live show. So we hope you'll participate in that. And if that's the way you wish to participate in the entire readathon, then you most certainly can. Like, that's cool. Um, but yes, so we'll have some other live shows. Um, we might even bring on a few guests. We're kind of playing around with the format of it for this year. Um, also, if you are on the story graph, 
We have the Her Story is Gone reading challenge set up there. I'll provide the link, um, but you can do that on the story graph. And if you aren't following Charlotte and I on the story graph, add us as friends or follow us, whatever you want. Um, but that is an opportunity for you to keep track of which prompts you're completing and how. Um, we also have the hashtag, hashtag her story -a -thon. Um, what else we got? So we do actually have a couple of non-reading prompts as well, which nearly slipped my mind. Um, but you can take a photo of yourself somewhere where an event from women's history took place, but you can also watch a movie, a documentary, listen to a podcast, a TV show, anything about women's history, um, like just a different form of media, basically. Um, and then the last thing is that we do have an Instagram account, so you can follow us over there. And if you are doing anything on Instagram, just make sure to tag us and use the hashtag so we can see it because that'd be fun. Um, but yeah, that's, that's really it. This is hopefully a quick video. <laughs> um, but I am very, very, very excited that her story a -thon is back and hope that you participate because it's just a load of fun. But thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up, comment and subscribe because it'll mean the world to me and help this little channel grow. Thank you so much. I'll see you next time. Bye.